we have defined graph and then some term concept. And we can ask ourselves whether there are, again, further irrelevant information that we might want to forget. In many cases, that is the case. There are still some irrelevant information. For example, we consider the graph G, which consists of the vertices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the edges, say 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 1. How does it look like? You have five dots, one, two, three, four, five, and here. You can already kind of see that the, this drawing is more intuitive. You immediately understand how it looks like. It gives you some geometric intuition, while this doesn't give you much in intuition. Anyway, we can consider this, and then we consider G prime which are A, B, C, D, E, five edges, uh, five vertices, A, B, C, D, E, and edges are this. How does it look like? A, B, C, D, E. Again, they look same, except uh, how we name the vertices. In many situations, when we are considering certain problems, those two graphs are identical. In terms of solving our problem, we don't care which vertex has which name. <clears throat> so, in order to treat these two indistinguishable graphs as one object, which has the same structural information, we introduce the following concept of graph isomorphism. So let G and H be two graphs. And we define an isomorphism from C to H is what is it? It is a bijection between vertices. Such that UV, I mean, it preserves the adjacency and non adjacency. UV is a edge of G if and only if fu and fe are adjacent in h. And we say that it's g and h are isomorphic. And we write that the G and H are isomorphic. If there is an isomorphism between G and H. <clears throat> so, under this information, it's easy to check that uh, this isomorphic I mean, relation, isomorphism relation is an equivalent relation. So, so it, I mean, partitions the, all the graphs into isomorphism class. So we, Call this as an unlabeled graph. This denotes an isomorphism class of class. Simply we draw in this way. 
where the named on the vertices are all lost. This does not mean that we cannot specify vertex. So we can still we will still say that this vertex is U, this vertex is B. But uh, that doesn't mean that this has name U, this has name V. We just refer this vertex and then we give name of this vertex for our convenience. It's not like uh, this vertex innately, innately have certain labels on it. It's just a vertex, but uh, for our convenience, we named it as U and then we talk about this. So this graph itself is unlabeled graph. And we simply draw them without any labels on the vertices. Okay, and many cases, I mean, we, we are interested in certain substructure in the graph. For example, in the matching problem, what we wanted to do is finding two vertices with an edge between them, which is certain substructure in the graph. And in the connectivity problem, we wanted to start from a vertex and then end in certain vertex. And we want to get there by a sequence of edges connecting them, which is also a certain subgraph. There could be additional structure outside, but uh, we are interested in this substructure of a graph. So we want to talk about this sort of existence of certain subgraph inside of a graph that motivates the following definition of subgraph. We say that a graph H is a subgraph of G if vertex of H is subset of vertex of G and the H set of H is subset of H set of G. And if the vertex set is same, then we say that H is a spanning subgraph. And in many situations, we want to delete some vertices. We want to reduce the vertex set that we are dealing with. And then we want to keep the edges within that. <clears throat> For example, you have a certain people with a relation between them. Somehow some people moved out and while moving out the relationship between the remaining people do doesn't change. Then what we want to just do is reduce the vertex set and then talk about the remaining subgraph. So we want to also define such a subgraph and you want to keep the name for it. For graph G and the vertex set, U, which is a subset of the vertex set of G. Then what we write is that uh, we write G bracket U and this denotes the graph with the vertex set U and edge set, which are contained in U.
and we call that the uh, this graph g bracket u is called the subgraph of g induced by u. So this is an induced subgraph of g. And if h is a uh, subgraph induced by u, then we say that this h is on induced subgraph of g. So, for example, if you have a G let's say you have this and then H is this graph then H is a spanning subgraph of G because you kept the vertices and you delete the matches, but not in this subgraph. On the other hand, if you take uh, H prime, one, two, four. And H prime is on induced subgraph of G, but not spinning subgraph. Okay. Okay, so in the next video, we want to define some special graphs, which will be useful for us to deal with the various concepts.